Oh, cool. Make sure everyone you like. Perfecto. All I ask is that you put it vaguely in the direction of your mouth. Okay. These pick up a lot in that specific direction, and they're actually quite good. I didn't realize. Last interview, uh, he was kind of holding it like this, and it was still quite good audio. Oh, cool. Yeah, I used to have one of these. It wasn't a Sony, but I, I used to record my music on these. Really? Yeah. When you first started out, or? Oh, no, it was like midway. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't have any any computer, any kind of recording capabilities. I just had my phone and one of these things, and it was just like, oh, okay, shit. Work, work what you got. And, and it worked. And you, you, you just be able to show people what you've been playing and also, like, listen to ideas. Like, it's mm. just for, like, scratch tracks, just coming up with something and yeah. coming back to it later. If the sprinkling is bothering you, then just let me know. Cool, cool. Oh. No. It's nice. Cool. It, I, I believe it's nice, but I'm not sure if everyone yeah, believes it's nice. This so. is the perfect setting. I was like, I was hoping we'd do it outside or something. Yeah, yeah. it's gorgeous. Um, yeah, for people who are listening, we're outside. You might hear a little bit of cars. I think the mics are good, so you'll hear some, but not much. Um, Sounds like waves. Yeah, sort of. Mechanical <laughs> waves. <laughs> so, so what instrument did you use? Oh, or man, make beats or all what? kinds of instruments. I play mostly electric guitar. Shit, I nice. play the bass, the keyboard, didgeridoo, harmonica, so You were talking about the didgeridoo yeah. when we met. Yeah. Fucking didgeridoo. Where'd you get that? So the first one was a pipe, a PVC pipe. Uh, I was a plumber for like six months. Okay. And so I just grabbed the pipe and started blowing it, put some nice wax in it. <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah, to around the edge. Sanded yeah. it down a little bit. And then I found one in a dude's closet. Oh, shit. Uh, he was, I, saw, I played it for him at a party. I went home, got some beeswax, and I put fresh beeswax in it. And nice. then about a year and a half later, I was like, hey, man, you still got that dude? <laughs> He's like, yeah, actually, you want to buy it? And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. He's like, how much? Nice. 170 bucks. 170 bucks. It was yeah. like a, a $2,000 authentic eucalyptus tree. Still yeah. has the bark on it. Nice. And then beautifully designed by an artist named Louis Burns. Okay. Louis Burns made back in, uh, it was made in 2003, I believe. Is that the guy that has um, the, the penguin puffin thing around? It's like, it's in tribute, so around Austin there's like the puffin penguin thing that's a Oh no, this guy's this guy. from Australia. Oh, he, never mind. He, I'm right. not sure if he's from Australia, but he trained from the Aborigines in Jesus, Australia. Nice. So that's why his, his didgeridoos are so authentic. Yeah, 2,000 bucks. Like, this thing, this thing is like a, a treat. Like, yeah. it's so heavy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're intense. But now I have, I make them. Okay. Make them out of agave oh, stuff. Oh shit, nice. Which yeah, you're is, telling me that. Which yeah, is Gabby like stuff. super light. Yeah. Those things literally weigh like... Three pounds instead of I would love to 10. see them. Yeah. That'd be so cool. Do you have any um, pictures? Um, I'd have to scroll through, but okay. I'll, I'll just bring him over. Yeah, You can just go over and check him out. Please. That'd be an awesome shit. I got, shit. A, I so got cool. an eight-footer I'm nice. working on. <laughs> wow. It's got to, like, be diagonal. Oh, really yeah. diagonal. Yeah, you have to... It'll be... It'll, it'll go all the way to the camera, just sitting from right here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. My brother yeah. went to um, Australia once and um, uh, bought a didgeridoo over there. I think they shipped it over. Don't think you checked it. I don't know if you can check a didgeridoo. Depending on if it's like, it can fit in the in the cabins, uh, the captain's cabin. Yeah, maybe. You know. Anyway, he, he got one and it came over and he was doing it. And um, it smelled really bad. <laughs> he offered that I would try, but it smelled really bad. Yeah, because he was spitting it all the time. Not oh, like, dude, on it's purpose. it's one of the most wet instruments besides yeah. the harmonica. Yeah, like you're literally blowing and spitting and breathing into it. It's Have a you lot seen of... Craig Ferguson? Uh huh. Uh, he's, he did a late late show with Craig did, Ferguson. Did he do uh, a joke on the didgeridoo? But no, like every single thing. Like at the end, he would be like, "Okay, do you want an awkward silence or mouth organ?" Yeah. And like it was obviously an innuendo, but mouth organ was a harmonica, and so either he would have like an awkward silence where he would just like make it as awkward as possible for like ten seconds, nice. <laughs> or uh, he would do like a little riff and like give a harmonica to them, and, and then have a harmonica and make a bunch of innuendo jokes, and then play the mouth organ. The, the harmonica is great because <laughs> it is a mouth organ. Yeah, it, it's an organ that you play with your mouth. Exactly, it has reeds that blow and like yeah. Yeah. Except for the pipes. The pipes, oh man, have you ever heard an organ in real life? Don't think I have. It's a pretty magical and intense feeling. Like, you're, really? it, it vibrates your whole entire oh, body and cell. Like, yeah. 
I would love to go play on Oregon <laughs> oh, <laughs> in the church. Yeah, I mean, I'm just checking. I, I'm a little paranoid. Um, I don't want to accidentally have an issue, so I'm pausing it. Checking the no, I'm pausing. Uh, I'm just going to be checking every now and then. Um, I accidentally, and again, if you want to move inside because of the sprinkle, that's okay. Um, I could just pivot. Let's do it. Let me check the framing. Oh, oh careful. Sorry. Is it still on? It says hold. All right, give me, give me, give me. Don't touch anything. My bad. All right. No, it doesn't say hold. It says record. It's good. Yeah, that's like breaking the mics. Was we're in the test run. See how how durable it is. Sure. <laughs> that's exactly what you're trying to do. I know. All right. So for those on the podcast, sorry for the movement, but there's movement. So. Mm-hmm. Hold this for a sec. Keep on that chair, please. <laughs> that way I can get you directly <clears throat> your beautiful face. And then my face is this? over here. Great. This one's yours. Cool, appreciate that. Yeah, that helps me individually um, change your volumes if needed. If like mine's a lot louder, yours is a lot louder, I can equalize them out. Cool. It'd be easy to listen to. Nice, nice. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure look- like yours is still picking up my voice too a little bit. Mine's still picking up your voice too. I'm looking but I'm gonna make it a mono track anyway. To hearing exactly how it sounds. I'm sure it's comes out good, I might want to get one of these for my process. Yeah. They're Sorry. only, um, so I got these at Best Buy, but on Amazon they're 40 bucks, and at Best Buy they're 60, but they do price matching. So it's totally reasonable. Yeah, so if you go to Best Buy, make sure you check the Amazon price. Okay, cool. And yeah, all match it. you can't get headphones in, and exactly. microphones, better microphones. That's cool. Mm-hmm. This is only a mono microphone jack, but I mean, I put these together into a mono track anyway, because mm-hmm. it'd be annoying if like one year, like if you're in the car and like, Somebody's listening to this, and one ear is one, the other ear is the other. It's yeah. just not what it's supposed to sound like. Exactly. Unless you want to feel like you're here, then it would kind of be cool. Right. <laughs> yeah. I'm really into, uh, like I said, I think I told you a little bit about it, getting mm. ASMR and. Mm. Oh, that's cool. Nice sounds with the voice. Um, All right. Real so, quick, let me yeah. go ahead and put this on silent. I totally forgot to do that. There we go. So, okay, so didgeridoo, cooking, uh, Electric guitar and a bunch of other instruments, uh, PVC pipe stuff, plumbing. What what don't you do? That's a good question. <laughs> That's a really. And good I know question. there's other stuff that you do. You're a cook. Yeah, and yeah. A lot of other things. I'm a, and ballet. I'm a chef. I just finished my tenth year in the Nutcracker, the Austin City Ballet. Um, I, I make jewelry. I make didgeridoos. I, nice. Um, All right. Let me see I'm if I can gardener. stump you. Uh, glass blowing. No. Okay. No, nope. me neither. I've 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 watched my homies do a lot of glass building. That's, That's pre- pretty awesome. I've never really done it. Yeah. Welding. Wow, I'm, I'm yes, a, I've done welding. You've done welding. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, what about carving? Yes. Carving. I mean, yeah, it's kind of it's part of uh, the didgeridoo making. That's a good point. Because I have to make mouthpieces out of different types of wood. Oh, so the mouthpiece is not from the same thing. Oh, because no. it's our agave. Because it's agave and it's so big and it's not. It doesn't really have much of a an element to put your mouth on and put wax around. I mean, I've oh. seen it done before, but I like getting like, uh, like red oak or, or or cedar. I have right now some spalted hackberry from Ooh. my old backyard, which is really that's gotta cool. be cool. Do you put like a polyurethane or like a yeah, resin on it? Yeah, eventually you'll you'll polyurethane the whole entire thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I may have a clear, nice hard clear. Coat. Yeah, it, it protects it. It keeps it from warping because also like you're putting a lot of moisture in there so okay. it'll it'll keep it from getting yeah. too messed up yeah i do know? so you you coat the inside too oh yeah yeah otherwise okay. it'll get a lot of, especially if it's spalted it's already half rotten well it's actually a really really hard wood compared to the agave the agave Ooh. is a little lighter okay you know it has it on the inside mm-hmm. it's like this cork material that you can literally Ooh. pull out in strips wow uh, almost like the inside of bamboo has that has that small little foamy. Yeah, the foamy thing. It's similar to that, but you can just rip it out, and then it has about a half of an inch diameter shell around the whole entire thing. That's pretty thick. But yeah, that. I'm sorry. To, I'm sorry. Half. Yeah, and half an inch diameter. That's a little bit thicker that you can't just rip out. That's that's yeah. what the that's what I carve it all down to. I okay. split it in half. I carve it down. I glue it back together. Oh, got, so that makes it easy to strip out. Mm-hmm. It's super easy. Yeah. Sometimes I can use a drill, 
and just <laughs> blast nice. it all out of there. I fucking love Dremels. Yeah. Apparently, so I didn't realize, you could, there are Dremels, there are rotary tools that work on compressed air, which makes a lot of sense. Yeah, um, when I worked for a sculptor, Jim Lapasso, mm -hmm. he does kinetic sculptures, and he had, okay. he had, um, um, a bunch of tools like that, you know, because you could grind it, and then you, mm. uh, you you weld it, then you grind it and sand it, and so weld he had all those compressed it. tools. Well, weld what? Well, so he made metal okay. sculptures. That's how I learned how to weld. Was yeah, yeah. Working with Jim Apostle and John Weber is they they make kinetic sculptures that blow in the wind. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Like like mobile thing, mobiles. So they're on of? a pedestal that's yeah. probably about twelve feet high, and then it's propelled by soup ladles. And it's yeah. That's so cool. One day I cut what? Like, one day I cut like two thousand soup ladles. <laughs> oh nice. Just for him. He's like, I want you to cut two thousand soup ladles. Yeah, because they needed it for the <laughs> so cool. for the for the sculptures. Oh, that's so awesome. Uh, one one sculpture to look up by them in yeah. particular is called the Paradox of Bling. The Paradox of Bling. Yeah. That one goes in all kinds oh, of shit. cool directions. Let me see let me see what time this is so we'll remember. It's eleven seventeen or so minutes in. So, um, mm -hmm. that way I'll know where to go if I want to get the name of that thing again. The Paradox of Bling. That was an awesome, awesome time. Is he Austin based? Yeah, the old, he's in Kyle. Okay. Yeah. My brother's name is Kyle. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, younger cool. or older? Uh, older. He's four years older. Than me, so. Nice. I got an older brother, too. Oh, cool. It's three keeps years. It, keeps it strong. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> or you keep them strong. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, oh shit, my little brother's doing good. I've got to do good too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know? I know a friend, I have a friend who, um, uh, roommate in college, he, him and his older brother is, like, you wouldn't know, you would think that he's the older brother, but he's the younger brother. Mm -hmm. Because of how they act together. That's how it is with my, yeah. my brother. <laughs> nice. I, I wonder if my little brother end up being like that, but. <laughs> I feel like I'm. So you're middle. I'm like the second youngest. I got two older sisters, okay. a little older brother, and a little brother. Cool. So it's like, yeah, I'm pretty it's much family. Pretty much the big brother for them all. Especially since it was homeschooled, it must have been like must have been crazy. Yeah, it's cool. You remember that? So I, was, I remember that. I was uh, I was homeschooled since the third grade, so we traveled all across the country. Yeah. My mom's a high end artist. And oh, what? A high end artist. High end, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so she made handmade greeting cards, silks, acrylics, mm. oils, slates, uh, oils on slates, silks. On sla a slate isn't like the rock. You're right. Okay. Yeah. Oils um, on slates, that sounds interesting. Yeah, she would make New Orleans, New Orleans art for a while, but. Um, you know I mean like making art in New Orleans, or is that something Like specific? New Orleans themed art. Like okay. Archways, Lighthouse. crocodiles, light the lighthouses and yeah. um, street lights. Okay. You know, the, the gas street lamps, yeah. you know what I mean? I went there for a week, I didn't notice the gas street lamps, but I did go to the lighthouse. Lighthouse mm -hmm. Point. I think it was called Lighthouse Point, right? Lighthouse sure. something. That was really cool. And then there was a bar where you walk in the door and it looks like you're walking into a police booth. Mm hmm Which obviously is TARDIS. Yeah. All police booths are tar TARDI. Yeah, I lived in the TARDIS for a little bit. Our, oh, well, that's cool. Our door was painted as the TARDIS. <laughs> so. He's called it the TARDIS. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Every, time and relative dimension everyone was like, space. wait, are you the one who lives at the TARDIS? <laughs> I was nice. like, yeah. Did you uh, paint it? Did your mom paint it? No, that, this is when I was an adult with my old roommates. Okay. <laughs> Damn, I gotta do that to mine. It's honestly pretty cool. Yeah, it sounds cool. Yeah. It sounds cool as shit. As long as you're allowed to. Yeah. Well, what I could probably do, what I definitely could do is, like, paste paper and then paint the paper. Exactly. Exactly. But then the wet, because it's outside. And then, I, I don't know. I could paste paper and then paint the paper with some kind of lacquer and then paste it on. Or you could paint the inside of your door so that when you walk outside the house, you're going inside of the TARDIS, which is the whole world. Uh, uh, that'd be cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, yeah, yeah. I like the reference to the, the Twilight Zone music. Solid. Right? Solid <laughs> I haven't seen the new Twilight Zone with um, uh, uh, Jason Peel. I haven't seen it either. Yeah, he's directing it or producing it or something. The Twilight Zone, the movie? No, 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 a new series. Oh, it was really? on CBS or something. Yeah, it came out like a couple years ago. Yeah, makes sense because he's doing like Get Out, like that movie was his. Uh, I think Us was the other one. 
And I've seen the trailers and they're creepy as fuck. It's like perfect Twilight Zone. Yeah. yeah. I love them. They're hilarious. Yeah, it got a little mediocre for a little bit there, but the, hopefully they're bringing back the good stuff from back in the day. Mm. The white and black. Yeah. Creepy. Rod ominous. Sterling. Yeah. Oof. They thought stuff. they were going <laughs> on a trip to somewhere. But what they didn't know was they stepped into the Twilight Zone. <laughs> you got it. I kind of did a little William Shatner there. You got but it. He, but he's in, one of his first things was in Twilight Zone. Mm-hmm. William Shatner. Mm-hmm. That's cool as shit. I think I was way before he was Kirk. Right? Yeah, like like five or ten years or something. I'm probably butchering this, so I'm sorry. If anyone's listening or watching and being like, No! No, it was this! not what happened. It was 15 years! <laughs> Stop it! Or like five years after. Like, I don't really know, so... Let me break. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... That was that was the one where they went to a Chinese restaurant, and they got a fortune, and the fortune was like, I don't know, but it was like a one of those Groundhog Day style things. Mm-hmm. It turned out to be like they just like they had they got the thing, they decided to stay, and then they were old, and then they left, and then the the younger version of them came in and saw these two old people, and then that was the older version of them. It was like a cycle. It was really creepy and weird. Can you imagine that actually happening to you? You know, put I yourself, can't. Put yourself <laughs> in that perspective, like, be like a bad dream, but it's real. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> yeah. Which reminds me, I think Groundhog Day was yesterday. Was it? Yeah. Was there a so. shadow? I don't know. I just saw it on the calendar. Nice. Yeah. It better be a fucking shadow. Come on. Wait, so shadow means that spring's over, or spring's coming, right? Yeah. And then like no that. shadow means no spring, because it's cloudy. Yeah. Okay. Oh, shit. It's cloudy. It is cloudy. But then again, we're not in Punxsutawney. <laughs> that was a great movie. Yeah, it was a good movie. Fucking Bill Murray. So you got some ghee going on today. I got some ghee going on today. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I'm looking forward to trying it. Yeah, for sure. You know? Inspired partially by you and partially by Matt Spore. Mm-hmm. It was mm-hmm. episode six. You're episode uh, seven. Nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, you were telling me you had another chef on here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm also interviewing Raj next week. Oh, cool. Yeah. Did you get a chance to talk to him? No, I was cooking. Okay. That's true. <laughs> That's so, so tell me about those purple potatoes, because those are intense. So I got those from Central Market. Okay. And I picked those out. I dug through the whole pile to get the small ones. Nice. <laughs> Baby purple potatoes. Yeah, they're usually about this big, and they're like they're like fingerling potatoes, so they're, oh, lo- they're longer like this. Nice. I'm just going to check the time and see if it's dead yet. It's good. Cool. And I, uh... It's only been that long? Wow. Feels like longer. We've been having an interesting conversation. It's only 18 minutes, right? Yeah. I, uh, I love those potatoes because they're big enough to where you don't have to cut through them. You can just pop the whole thing in your mouth. Mm. You know what I mean? I think you did cut them in half or quarters or yeah, something. Yeah, for presentation Yeah, purposes. to make it look cool. Yeah. Yeah. And you can see the inside. The inside of the color is nice. Oh, yeah. Um, it's so deep purple. It's great. Such a beautiful purple. Anything purple I want to eat. Like, there's been a few... Yeah. A few, uh, a few months there that I would just buy everything purple. Nice. You know, beet greens, purple cabbage, purple yeah, carrots. Yeah. What <laughs> else is there purple that I don't know Oh, about? man, everything. Col- that- uh, there's uh, purple kohlrabi, there's purple kale. There's purple cauliflower, right? There's purple cauliflower. And that just has to do with the pH of the soil or something yeah. like that. It's purple broccoli. And then it can be um, orange, too. Uh, what else is there? Dude, purple broccoli, I didn't know about. There's purple basil, there's purple what? everything. Yeah. Does it taste like regular basil? Yep. What? Yeah. What does that mean? Is it like the same plant in like different soil? Or? It has a slight difference in taste, but okay. it's it's basil. It's purple. I fucking love basil. Yeah. Basil's the best. Have you had lemon basil? I have not had lemon basil. If you like basil, you're going to really get off on oh, lemon shit. basil. I probably will be. Lime basil as well. Um, I will probably get off on all the basils. Tulsi. That's holy basil. Like Tulsi Gabbard? Tulsi tea. Like, tul- Tulsi is a uh, holy, holy basil. Holy like, basil. It is the most happy, light thing to cook oh with. I put them in spring rolls the other day. Yeah. Oh, man. Dude. You know what I love that Trader Joe's does? What? Which is sort of relevant to basil, but not really. Um, they have chicken cilantro mini wontons. Chicken cilantro mini wontons. Yeah, it was like dumpling. Oh, my fucking God. I, I What I do, and I promise myself... If I paid rent on time, which I did, um, <laughs> that I would get myself some, so I need to go and actually do that. Um, I've, I paid it, like, by the 31st, because they're doing a thing where it's like, if you pay by the 31st, 
then we'll put you in a raffle to get 200 bucks off next month. I'm hey. like, fuck yeah. All right. Why not? But I was planning force, to do it anyway. Force you to pay your rent on time. Well, I was going to anyway. <laughs> um, but that was a little extra bonus. I'm like, why not get a bonus for doing what I was already going to do? Bonus on the bonus. Yeah. Um, but there are these like, little dumplings with... Oh my fucking God. Where'd nice. you get those? Trader Joe's. Trader Joe's. Frozen. Okay, just yeah. That. It's pretty simple. You just put some oil in a pan. I'm going to try it with ghee. And the thing is, I actually, um, I save all the, um, I make a lot of bacon, mm-hmm. and I save all the bacon fat. Mm-hmm. So I also have that. I usually cook with that, mm-hmm. but I'm going to yeah. cook with the ghee this time. Of course, yeah, yeah, bacon fats. Oh my God. Can't go wrong. I am a horrible <laughs> Jew. <laughs> Probably the worst. That's good. Sorry, Mom. Uh, no. <laughs> no, I've made it a point to try all the tra- the tray fish, the, mm. the... What's a tray fish? Or the, the trafe. Trafe. What's a trafe? Trafe is what you're not supposed to eat as a Jew. Oh, I should know this. <laughs> <laughs> the crawfish, the, the yeah. shrimp, all the shellfish. When you're a cook, how could you not? Are you Jewish? Well, I was raised Jewish. Oh, shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, this. I, never got, I never got to yeah. I never got to eat pork, you know. Oh. Uh, no, no crab, no lobster. Yeah, no. So Matt, now. Matt, the guy I had on before, he was also Jewish. Yeah. And now as an when I was an adult, it's like, okay, let me, let me, yeah. that. Let me try that. Oh, yeah. Let me try that oyster. Let me try that clam. Oh, <laughs> no, no, the face you made. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. it's like, that's the good face. Yeah, oh. it's like, oh, that's when you something's know. good. You look like you're from New Orleans. Like, I could see you walking around in New Orleans and be like, that guy's a local. Because of the way your mustache is. I mean, dude, I got a love-hate relationship for that city. Yeah. You know, I was only a kid from, like, from 8 till 14. Yeah. But still, I didn't. I don't like that city. Okay. I'm sorry. All the it's New like there is a house in New Orleans. Like, yeah, it's it keeps like, you there. It gets you stuck. It's dirty. So it's stinky. There's assholes. It's very corrupt. Mm. The list can go on, but that's very negative. I do love their music. I do love their architecture. Okay. And so it's I one of those places love, that's cool to visit, but not to yeah, live. I do love some of the people there yeah. because I do have some really cool friends that live okay. there. But at the same time. I could only handle about a week of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I get that. That makes sense. So, so, uh, yeah. so your suggestion to would be if anyone hasn't gone to New Orleans, go for a week max. And then um, leave. three to four days, not three even a week. Three okay. to four days. Make sure you have a few hundred dollars. You have money to buy cool stuff. Yeah. And um, don't give it to any homeless people. <laughs> and you know. Yeah. Like. I never go alone. That's the only thing I say. Don't go alone. Don't go down any dark alleyways. Mm-hmm. Um, Common sense. Because the the corruptness is still there. You know the the mm. the the the, the, um, the crime is still there. But at the same mm. time, it's not as bad. Yeah. But just be cautious. Have your street smarts. You know. Okay. Know 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 what to and what not to do. Yeah. Oh, suggestions for New Orleans if you go go to Frenchman. Frenchman. <laughs> Frenchman. Yeah. It's at the end of Decatur. I mean, it's mm. it's the best. Okay. Yeah, it's where Frenchman all the, Street. Frenchman Street. It's where all the okay. locals hang out. It's like the good music. We got street food. It's so it's awesome. Ooh. It was either there or Bourbon Street, and there is this magician dude. Bourbon Street during the day. That was probably that was probably what it was. Yeah, it was yeah. probably Bourbon Street during the day because it was during the day. Bourbon Street. And there's a dude like doing magic stuff. In Pirates like, Alley, the square during the day. You and know, obviously, like, don't have your wallet like this, right? Because absolutely not. Where it is. Yeah. So there are pickpockets. Oh, yeah, dude. Okay. I mean, because this is fine in Austin. I can do this in Austin. For sure. But I can't do that in New Orleans. Nah. Okay. Nah, nah, nah. I'm actually standing up. Oh, I don't think you can see it. Basically, I'm pointing to my wallet, for those who are listening, which um, has a money clip, and I use the clip the clip on the outside of my yeah. jeans. Um, and so the clip is showing. If, when my shirt's a little up, my clip is showing. And so he's saying, don't have a visible... Thing you do it all for your wallet. So. Or phone. No or phones phone. in the back pocket. <laughs> mm. In your purse or in your front pocket. Yeah. Deep, if you can do it. In or pocket. in your, you know, yeah. your cleavage or something. I, I don't have enough cleavage. I feel really, <laughs> really insecure about it. Actually, that. don't put your phone in your cleavage because that's how breast cancer comes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, uh, when I travel, I use a travel wallet, which is it's like a, a zippery thing. And then it has a strap on it, and I put the strap around my neck, and then put it underneath my shirt, and then into my pants, so that if somebody wants to uh, steal something, they have to reach it in my pants. Exactly. But it looks really awkward when I'm getting my card out, though. <laughs> <laughs> but it's worth it. <laughs> if I'm in the middle of Colombia and I have a passport I don't want anyone to have, or my card or whatever, I want it to be in there. Absolutely. But they might see the outline of it, but they have no chance of getting it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
So that might be a good thing for New Orleans. Oh, yeah. That's good thinking. I haven't even thought of that. Yeah. I, I do that when I go overseas because I can't have my passport lost. Mm -hmm. I always have my passport in that no matter where I am. Yeah, my friend. And it's always in. So it's always on me if somebody needs to see it, but it's it's never going to be pickpocketed. Yeah, my friend just lost her Shit. passport out there. Is she still out there? Oh, no. She got back, but... Yeah. She's trying to figure that out today. I was like, oh, shouldn't have lost your passport. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> tell, tell her what I, what I was saying, the, the travel wallets. I have those. Well, she didn't have it stolen, but she just lost it. Yeah. I mean, you still never lose it. It's right. always in there. Then it's always in there. Exactly. And as long as you know where that is, like when you're sleeping, like hang it up, you know, do like a loop de loop thing and hang it up in the closet mm -hmm. or something. It doesn't exactly. have to be on you when you're sleeping, but when you're out, it's always on you. Mm -hmm. And so are your cards and everything. Yeah, I needed to get, I need to get me one of them. It's almost like a little fanny pack. Sort of, yeah. It's a fanny but pack that goes in your pants. A mini fanny pack. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's that a mini fanny pack that goes like, you know, nice. next, to your, next to your thigh nice. or something. So, do um, you travel a lot? No, I have not traveled outside the country, but okay. I have traveled all across the country. Like where? Um, well, California, Pennsylvania, yeah. um, all of Texas, oh, shit. Uh, New Mexico, um, <clears throat> Virginia last year. Virginia's for lovers. It was, it was, it was a fun drive. Um, yeah. but where did you go to in Virginia? Uh, Roanoke. 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 Is that R O A N O A K C K K E? I don't know how to spell that. <laughs> that sounds about right. <laughs> Something like that. One of those. One of those. I don't spells. even try to. <laughs> yeah, just for funsies or, or what? Uh, no, I was delivering a band van. I drove a band van up oh. to up there, so it was like it was a job. So I went up to Arkansas first, and then. <laughs> you know, it's a misdemeanor in Ar Arkansas to say that. I heard about that. It's just hilarious. <laughs> They're like, we're not Kansas. <laughs> Arkansas. Arkansas. I don't know if they persecute it, but it's technically a misdemeanor. I think you're not allowed to say Arkansas either. <laughs> yeah, you, you just can't say, mispronounce it. You gotta say Arkansas. Yeah. <laughs> so I went, to, I went up to Arkansas. Then I take. We're the, not there. I, I went down the Bible here. Belt, down through Tennessee, yeah. and uh, all through them. Oh states. shit! So like you were selling it to them, or no, you were borrowing it from them and had to give it back? Or? Just delivering. It was like after ACL, and they they had a band, and oh. they flew back, and then I. Flew oh, your okay. equipment and van back up there. That's cool. I hope yeah. they paid you for expenses and stuff. Oh, yeah. Good. Oh, yeah, paid you good. Nice. Yeah, that's fun. <laughs> nice. Yeah, if you have a, have a car with all your stuff in it. Yeah, they flew me back. They paid for the hotel. That's, that's cool as shit. Yeah. Good for them. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah. I want to do it again. Yo, holler at me. Do it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shout out. Good you shit. got a band? You got a band van? You got a truck? You got 18 wheel? I'll drive it. <laughs> <laughs> you, have to, you have to use that voice. Uh, where can they contact you if there's like a... Instagram or website. You, you, again, at the end, this isn't the end. Yeah, 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 well, send some, some, leave some links and shit. Yeah. Cool. Well, links will be in the episode description. Some tags. If you wanna, if you want him to drive you, drive his, drive your van. And then my, uh, my roommate's a pilot, so if you got a plane you need to fly or something, just give me a holla, and uh, we'll make sure he has a mustache, a pair of glasses, you know, that a captain hat, you know, make him look good. Make him look good. Yeah, you gotta look like a pilot. You gotta look like you belong, otherwise it's not real. You gotta have the AVI and the glasses, you gotta have a big mustache. No 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 deal if you didn't get the mustache. Yeah. Yeah, he's got you've got the mustache. <laughs> yeah, man, I, I was debating whether or not I wanted to cut it off recently, but then Your I was choice. like I can't. I can't yeah. cut it off. Because I'm about to do this job where they know Where you work with kids. No, where they know us as the mustache mic crew. Oh my, my nice. Buddy, my other buddy, he has a big elaborate Mustache. Okay. His name is actually Mustache Mike. Nice. His name is Mike. Yeah. You're both. You're both are. We names actually Mike. have the same birthday too. That's really it's awkward. Ten years apart. Yeah. Wait, your name is Mike and his name is Mike. Yeah. Just, that's got to be confusing. Yeah. And we it's Mike's birthday mustache. today. You gotta get him a thingy doodle and like they give it to the wrong Mike. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> Has that happened before? Yeah, actually, we oh, we've geez. had uh, we've had two birthday parties the past two years and it's just like. Which Mike is this for? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's awkward. It's like God. Uh, I'll just take this half and you just take that half. Yeah, I'm, I'm Pirate Mike, and he's Mustache Mike, and then you're what Mike? Pirate Mike. Pirate Mike. Oh, well, I always I wear my see bandana. That. So were you wearing a bandana that night? Probably. I have to. I don't when remember. Cooking. Yeah. Oh, I think that makes sense. Like, you don't want the hair to fall in. Yeah. I gotta get a hairnet or something. For yeah, or something. Pee. Beard net, hairnet, eyebrow yeah. net, everything. Just, Jesus, eyebrow net. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure if you're in some kind of like industrial thing where you couldn't get dust on anything. You'd, like uh, when they when they manufacture silicone, wait for, Pro wait for probably, it. but it, yeah, they wear goggles. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
But yeah, man. Can't cut off the stash, dude. There's no way. Yeah. <laughs> Are you gonna grow this out ever? Uh, not right now. This is like a. This is like getting close to the summer, and I have to stay semi. Yeah. Professional looking for my clients. Yeah. You know what I mean? The mustache is acceptable. It's kind of. Yeah. It's pretty common to see chefs with yeah. mustaches. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think if you have, it depends on like the persona you want to build. If you want to be like, I'm, I'm real, I'm rough. Then you can kind of grow out your beard as long as you keep it safe, you know? Right. Like, I'm a mountain cook. Mountain man cook or something. Well, I like to keep it safe, you know what I mean? Okay. It's like, you know, I keep the, I try to keep the sideburns trimmed, the neck mm -hmm. trimmed, everything trimmed up so yeah. there's no risk. I've been, I've been open, my business has been open for two years, and I've never mm -hmm. had anybody find any hair in their food. Good. You know what I mean? Nice. May it stay that way. Yeah. Hopefully it stays that way. But, yeah. you know, they just like, didn't find it. It was there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. He's very clean. And I like to keep my mustache like wax, so it's like nice. it's like no risk of anything. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, my friend makes mustache wax. For real? Yeah. I got one that does, uh, nice. his, his name's Bearded Bastard. Or oh, shit, nice. His name's Jeremiah Newton. I but. think, um, I, I've seen Bearded Bastard places. I forgot the name of the, um, I use Beard uh, Balm. And I forgot the name of it, and it might be Bearded Bastard, but it might be something completely different. It's some au local Austin-based thing. Dude, he gave me... It's like, like a black tin. He gave me a bunch of flavors for the mustache wax. Oh, that's my cool. favorite one was the Opium Den. Yeah, I think that's that's the same one that I use, I think. I think it's Bearded Bastard, I'm not sure. Yeah, the Opium Den was like... I used the one that says has the green thing. Okay. I he, that was. His labels are all um, wood and... Burned. Burned in the wood. No, it's not him then. Yeah. I've seen that. I've seen the Opium Den one, and I've smelled it at some craft fair somewhere. It's so good. Sounds good. Yeah. 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 Sounds good. So um, so what are you passionate about, man? I know we were talking about yeah. our passions and everything. What's, what gets you excited? A bit of everything. Um, I just like making things with my hands. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, honestly, I've dedicated myself to bookbinding for a few years, and a lot of that is just because... I kind of wanted to handle people like, oh, that guy bookbinds. Um, but I like doing so many things. I was um, I was telling you as you arrived, actually right after you arrived, because I'm really excited about it, um, I started making ghee. Yeah, man. Yeah. Was last night there was a, a thing on YouTube. Um, it was I think it was suggested. It was like, oh, no, what happened was I, um, I had heated up a bunch of, like, uh, butter scraps, mm -hmm. and I put it into... Um, I got these uh, kind of like Pyrex, the, the borosilicate hardened, whatever it's called. The Pyrex stuff you can put in the oven, the glass you can put in the oven. Yeah. And so I'm putting like a lot of small pieces of butter, the ends of the butter, and I put them in and I was melting them together. And I put it at a really low temperature for like a long time. And I pulled it out and it was kind of separated, which I thought was weird. And then I put it in the fridge and it congealed and I tasted it and I'm like, this tastes like ghee. Huh. Did I accidentally make ghee? Mm -hmm. And so then I looked and I researched last night and like, oh, I guess I did. Because all you do to make ghee, I didn't do it like perfectly. It wasn't mm -hmm. like purified enough. But you just heat it up at a medium temperature for a long time. And then the um, first, the milk solids kind of come to the top. Yeah. And then they sink later as the water bubbles out. Right. And so ghee is, it's called clarified butter. It's essential, or butter oil. It's essentially the butter, but without any of the water and without any of the milk solids. Right. So just whatever else is in the butter. Mm -hmm. but apparently, like, people who are allergic to milk aren't allergic to it. It has, like, no lactose. Uh, so it doesn't trigger any sensitivities to people who have butter, if it's pure enough, obviously. Mm -hmm. I'm not making claims for mine because I don't know how pure it is. I'm just started. Um, and actually, by, le by law, I have to say it contains milk. Right. But... Um, yeah, um, it's just been fun. It's been great. It's been easy, and that's just something that I'm I'm gonna um, apply to farmers markets to sell there. Just that's exciting. Fuck it, why not? <laughs> yeah, just make a bunch of yeah. it and set up. You can make yeah. all kinds of stuff. You make lip bombs, all kinds of salves and treats with butter with with ghee. Yeah, with ghee. Yeah, fuck yeah, just man. Free. Keep it keep it Shit. cold. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like it's an excellent source of good that's fats. A good point. You know what I mean and. Um, it's really good for the joints. Like, he is a really, 
really awesome. Like to rub idea. on your joints or like to eat? No, to ingest. Joints. Okay. You know, you're... <laughs> I was looking, it's like you just rub it on your elbow. And then it was, like, elbow I mean, beans. if you're into that kind of thing. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Maybe you can make massage oil out of it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, kind of. Kind of. <laughs> just put a little lavender sure. in it and call it massage oil. Yeah, I'm not sure it smells too good. But <laughs> <laughs> I once went to a place, uh, that was in Eastern Europe, and there is this... Um, this um, massage parlor, and I walked by it, and I walked in it, and it was, everything had beer and hops or whatever. Like, everything was just made of beer. Mm -hmm. Like, the massage oil, you go into a beer bath, and you come out, and they massage you with, like, beer-based uh, oils. That's awesome. Yeah, and so they, like, at the, the counter, they had this tester for some kind of, like, hand lotion, mm -hmm. and they're like, yeah, but use it. It smells like beer. I'm like, okay, and so, like, I put on my hands and my arms, and I'm like, I smell like I just doused myself in beer. I don't know if I want that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was hilarious. <laughs> it's like, if you really like beer, then come here. <laughs> Damn. You really don't funny. even have to get drunk to no. smell like beer. Just come on in. Yeah. Want a free DWI? <laughs> exactly. I don't know how strict they are in Latvia. Yeah, I mean, in, in America it wouldn't be acceptable. No. Maybe, maybe in New Orleans, but... Maybe. Maybe, maybe New Orleans. I think in Arkansas, that's where they have the... Um, the dry county? No, the drive drive through bars. I think in Texas that's legal, but you can't use a straw or something. Drive through bars. Like yeah, you get a you get a co you get drive through, you get a cocktail, and I think the rule is you can't put a straw in it or something weird like that. But who's gonna fucking listen to that? You just bought it and put it in your cup holder. I've never heard of this. Yeah. This is crazy. I don't know if it's Texas in some state. Yes. It's like a lot of states used to, and then now it's still legal in a couple states, as long this, as you don't put a straw on it or this, something this, weird like that. This sounds really sketchy. I agree. <laughs> I fucking agree. It's so stupid. I'm like, oh, man. Um, so, okay, so ballet. Mm -hmm. I, I've been really curious about that because I love how that's a really... Okay, 10% remaining. <sighs> that means it's going to go dead soon. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to um, get my charger from inside and then we'll continue this. Actually, I'm going to stop it. Yeah, just pause it. Cool. Great. It's synced. Let me just make sure the framing is still good. The framing is still good. Awesome. All right. I am curious um, what your time constraints are. I'm a free man. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. That's what I like to hear. I'm just gonna go play some rock and roll after this. Bow, bow, bow. I got a show on the sex sixth. and drugs too. No, no, no. Okay, no, just rock and no, roll. No, no, no. I've been saving that. Okay. <laughs> That's rock, for later. Yeah, just for rock and roll. We've got a show on the sixth at the Carousel Lounge. Oh shit. Nine p.m. Nice. Um, nice, bro. Yeah, nice, mate. Nice. So I'm gonna go home and play some music after. Oh, yeah, you this. say mate, you wouldn't say bro. Yeah, nice, mate. Nice, mate. That's like, like the the British slash Australian version of bro. Yeah, I can't. I can't, I can't do either <laughs> like, or. I'm always like this Australian British. Like, you know what I mean? My, you, you were in the British Army and traveled everywhere. <laughs> exactly. Obviously. Um, but uh, you yeah. asked your question, answer your question about ballet. Um, yeah. The, uh, so it all started when I was 17 years old. Mm. I was living on the farm. When I was a wee lad. Yeah, when I was a when wee I lad. When I was a young warthog. <laughs> when he was a young warthog. <laughs> I eat 12 dozen legs. <laughs> but no, I, yeah. I, uh, I went to audition with my, uh, my first girlfriend. Okay. Uh, we were, I was living on the farm. The farm? She, yeah, I lived on an organic farm from 16 okay. to 18 and a half. Oh, shit. Uh, mm -hmm. with, with your mom? No, with the girl. With the girl. I, I met her at a farmer's market. And fell in love. she was like, hey, can I take your son? No, what so happened? I technically, to uh, the long story short, my mom kicked me out, ah. and then she wanted me to come back two weeks later. But I was like, I'm no. okay. I got my <laughs> own room. I'm getting. I'm eating good over here. There's I'm a girl. Good. <laughs> you know, I can nice. play the guitar as loud as I want. Not yeah. piss off anybody. This is great. Mm. <laughs> and so I stayed nice. there for two and a half years. That's cool as shit. Uh, but like a year into that. I went to an audition with her. I had a mohawk at the time. Ooh. I was listening to Ozzy Osbourne. Nice. I had no interest in dancing or anything. In and and any kind of dancing. Any movement. kind of movement, any kind of dancing. And I, I did I did handstands and I did like some acrobatics. Crazy. But that was about it. Yeah. And then I went in they said they needed some dudes without any dancing experience. <laughs> nice. And so I went in there. I mm. did I'm just gonna check the phone, but I'm still yeah, I did uh, a handstand. And the polka. 
Okay. And that was it. And they gave me four rolls in the Nutcracker. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Four rolls. So you yeah. had to like change, come back, change, come back, change, exactly. come back. Exactly. I was party boy, soldier, soldier doll in Russian that first year. And then the next year they made me Chinese. And they gave me a, a scholarship after that first year. Oh, shit. And so nice. ever since then I had a scholarship for ballet. Nice. And I did it for many moons. You've had Ten an years. interesting life. Oh, yeah. It was just tip of the iceberg. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's exactly why I want to interview you. Um, I forgot what... I think... I think you just mentioned a few things that you were doing, and I'm like, you're the exact type of person that I want on this. Because I actually used to call it the Renaissance Man Network. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I'm doing. But um, I, I changed the name so much um, because I was trying to find some kind of clarity within myself of mm-hmm. what I was trying to do, and so I'm really happy with the name where it is. I don't think it'll change. Nice. But um, I, I always was trying to find more clarity and trying to like make it resonate. Um, and the Renaissance Man network does kind of resonate but um i really like the idea of, of it being about passion exactly passion unchained and that, that's exactly how what drives me is i'm passionate about it i can know? see that everything that i do is just you know totally enthralled and I, yeah it's it's a it's it's in a way it's a coping mechanism and it's also um a release of energy and it's also mm-hmm. uh, a therapy you know mm. what I mean to concentrate mm. on the good and the mm. passions instead of get lost in the negativity and the yeah. normal struggles struggles oh. the daily so there's American like a specific life. thing that you're trying to you feel like you're trying to hide from by doing things or is it just mm. you know, I mean I've all my life yeah all my life, life I've just I've I didn't realize this until a few years ago but all my life I've just always had to cope mm. it's always been Oh, like, like always, just get used to it, mm-hmm. and like this is just the way it is, and you mm-hmm. just have to know how to deal with it. Yeah. And I didn't know that I, I was coping to everything, and so that I started to just forget about my actual feelings and my mm-hmm. emotions, and then now, uh, now I like I've gone through a process of healing and and mm-hmm. and acknowledging my feelings and acknowledging. Mm-hmm. why I'm feeling this way and, and instead of just being like oh this is the way it is mm. I actually address it and I find solutions and I make sure mm. that uh, I'm not just coping but mm. the reason why I say that mm. we, we use it as a coping mechanism mechanism because yes um, there is some deep seated things in everyone that initially will be there forever mm. and in our ways of dealing with um, dealing with these things because we do these passions, we express ourselves in other ways, mm. the way we can. It diffuses the, the, the tension that builds yeah. up. Yeah, because there's some... It distracts there's a, us from the problems. Right, there's a, there's a lot of things that can't be described through language mm. and body, you know, body language. It's it's described through music or art yeah. or dance or, or, yeah, body language just speaks louder than words sometimes. Yeah, um, yeah, for sure. So, yeah, I, I'd say it's a, it's a bit of a coping mechanism and it's a, it's a bit of a... It's a therapy. It's a release for me. So that's why that's what pushes me to be push, to be so passionate about mm. everything that I do. Um, and just to do things, just to create, mm-hmm. inspires me, man. Yeah. Yeah, and inspires because I I love first of all one thing I love. I'm gonna just check to make sure it's still going. We're still going. Um, one thing I loved about um, about meeting you and especially about the ballet is is um, it really shows that you're doing it because you care, not because of what people will think. Because, of oh, course, man. there's a lot of judgments about a guy who does ballet. Right. From other people, from people that don't really know Absolutely. what's up. So it, that's one thing that I really, I thought was really cool about you is that you are obviously doing what you want with life. You're, mm-hmm. you're making your own path through life and you don't really care what other people think. Exactly. That's exactly the point. And um, the funny thing is when people think that they're going, they want to go and be a person who does what they want with people, you know, and, and not caring about what people think, they think that looks like I'm going to be an asshole. Right. But really what it looks like is you. Like, you're a passionate person. You care about... You're not going to be a dick to anyone. Mm-hmm. But you're doing what you want. And exactly. you're realizing that this is your life. And I, I respect that. And that's an awesome point that you just made is that uh, I care... I did it because I care about it. Mm-hmm. And I even... I went through breaking my femur. Jesus. Um, four years into it. And I still... It's a hard bone to break. It's the biggest bone. <laughs> uh, so, like, I did... Three roll, three years in the Nutcracker, and then that fourth year I broke my femur, so Jeez. I went up to six rolls yeah. in the Nutcracker to one That's roll. A lot of rolls. So I still yeah. performed the Nutcracker. Yeah. Four months after breaking my leg. Jesus. I probably shouldn't have. <laughs> yeah. But I still did because I yeah. wanted to do it, and I can't. I, can't, I wasn't gonna let it just stop me. How'd you break it? 
Uh, took a longboard down South Amar, and I jumped off in front of Uchi Sushi. Took three uh, steps, and then the third step broke the left geez. femur right in half. They wow. put a metal rod and two big bolts. Jeez. They're out now? or they're Yeah, straight? I had it taken out ten months later. Okay. But the, the point of the story is that I continue to do it year after yeah. year, you know. I worked my way I worked my way back up to where yeah. I was. So like that first year after the nutcracker I had one roll. The next year I had two rolls. The next mm -hmm. year I had three rolls. Mm. And then that fourth year was the, the one of the only years that I took a break and I was in a professional dance company oh, cool. where I got to travel and get paid and act myself. Uh, like I got to come up with so many characters. That's so cool. Um, one of them was uh, Julio Sanchez the third. He was one of my favorite. He had a bunch of <laughs> he had a bunch of squeakers. I got to talk like this all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. Julio Sanchez the third. Uh, that was a great costume. I had, I had awesome. I had a onesie mechanic act uh, <laughs> mechanical. You mecha guys need your uh, plumbing fixed. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and I, I put a bunch of dog toys. I had uh, nice. I had them put about twenty pockets in them. Yeah. And it hidden all over. And had a dog toy right there. Oh, you yeah, like all a clown. Over the place. Speaking, speaking. Exactly. Yeah. Hilarious. That was a fun one. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. And then I went I went back to the ballet yeah. after doing that for a year. I got to travel to New sure. Orleans and San Diego and do a bunch of awesome performances yeah. for South by. But then I, I went back to the ballet and then I had I was Mother Ginger and Drosselmeyer for Mother Ginger. Mother Ginger, she has like a big dress. Is that a uh, nutcracker thing? Yeah, it's in the uh, second I act. Seen the Kids come popping out of dress. It's the only. <laughs> that's hilarious. It's the only time I'm willing to dress and drag. But yeah, that's hilarious. <laughs> it's a Miss Doubtfire. Exactly. No, it was it was a lot of fun. And then I, uh, what was it? The year before last year. Yeah. I got to do Russian, which was it's the most. The Russian. It's the fastest dance in the Nutcracker. Oh, is that like the thing where you? Exactly. Yeah, I bring break dance in the ballet, and so it was like. Oh, that's cool. It was like at that moment there, I got to be the Rat King as well that year. Okay. Um, that requires a lot of um, a lot of leg strength. Right? Oh yeah, a lot of leg strength, a lot of. Um, balance. Balance, a lot of. Uh, that's the thing where you're going like. That thing, right? We 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 do that, but this that year we did. We did okay, did, but you know exactly what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah, well, I can't do. I mean, I tried once. Um, uh, my like maybe seventeen in the late seventeen hundreds. Um, uh, a branch of my ancestors uh, lived in Russia. Oh, now they still live in Russia, but like all my branch, like mm -hmm. where I split off from, lived in Russia. Um, like late seventeen hundreds or so, they came to the U.S. Uh, on that that part of the family and. Um, I was once at a camp out with a bunch of people, and they're like, everybody from with Russian heritage, come in, we're going to do a dance. And I'm like, oh, okay. And so I'm like, I have my arm around somebody, and I'm trying to do it. And I'm like, oh, oh my goodness. And I'm like, kind of like half standing up. I, I wasn't doing yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> but I really want to learn to do that. It's hard, man. Yeah. It's hard dancing. Yeah. The proper way. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, man. That's been one thing that's like really showed me Dedica uh, dedication and, mm. and passion and, and um, discipline mm -hmm. it was ballet. Ballet, you know, they taught me a lot and they they dealt with me through my my young my younger adolescence. Nice, and you know, and they never turned me away. They always wanted me to come, and and so that was like a second family to me. You know what I mean? Okay, they really were supportive to making sure I danced. Yeah. You know? um, That's pretty cool. Last year, I was the I was Arabian uh, party parent and Russian. Yeah. And it was like, this is awesome. Arabian party parent? Mm-hmm. That's okay. in the first act. So it's just the parent that puts on the party. Um, no, the, I wasn't that one. I was just a, party, uh, a parent that came over for the party. Okay. There's like five families that come over. I had okay. like, I had 12 kids, you know, no nice. big deal. <laughs> no, just a you know, day in the life. <laughs> But no, it's it, it was a really fun experience. I'm really yeah. thankful for the ballet. I'm I'm taking a break from it. Okay. To focus on my music mm. and to focus on my business. Yeah, your Simon's, business is the personal you know, chef. Simon's eats. Simon's eats. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I I know your your last name is Simon. Mm -hmm. And um, I know when we left, uh, Mel Melanie, the one who hired you, mm -hmm. um, to to host the, not to host but to cook for the uh, the dinner. Um, she said, uh, thank you, Chef Simon. Mm hmm Yeah. And so I thought your first name was Simon. Oh, yeah. But it wasn't. You see, I, I've been going by Simon a lot lately. Yeah. Uh, just because it goes with Simon's Eats. And also, there's a lot of freaking Michaels. <laughs> yeah. And your brother's name is Michael. Uh, my buddy. I mean, he's my buddy, Michael. Oh, I thought you said your brother's name was Michael. Brother from another mother. Oh, gotcha. All right. 
cool. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that would be all, as like same. That would birth- be kind of weird. Same birthday guy, right? Yeah. Okay. That would be like Mike. That's why I thought that I said something like your parents must have a sense of humor or something. Because uh, okay. Mike Simon, Mike <laughs> Simon, same birthday, but different year. That would have been weird. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that'd be Definitely weird. would have had two different dads if it was that situation. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Separate occasions. Hmm. You know, I bet you there is a situation out there like that. It's gotta be. Yeah. <laughs> There's, uh, I see these things in books that's like people, um, like families where they're all born on Christmas. Mm-hmm. Just different years. Mm-hmm. Spooky. Or like New Year's. Like three siblings that are all born on New Year's and, and it was like a year and year and year. Sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah, most they, of my they family that are Sagittarius. Sure. <laughs> you know, the springtime is a magical time. You it know? is. <laughs> it is. My parents um, had it on sometime in the winter when they needed to huddle each other. I, I love how you said it. They, they had it on sometime in the winter, you know. Yeah, well, they did. <laughs> they did. Um, I've been trying to get the date. I've been try- I'm curious about the date I was conceived. Uh, and they, I actually don't even remember. Right. Um, but I'm curious because, and they might remember someone to tell me. But I'm curious because I was born on September 28th, mm-hmm. which was, hint, if you want to give me presents. Oh, it's um, the day after my father's birthday. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. It's my, um, my friend's birthday and my stepsister's birthday. Ah. Um, and um, it was on the Hebrew calendar in that year, it was Rosh Hashanah. Mm-hmm. So I've been really curious if I was conceived on January 1st, because then I would be... Conceived on New Year's and born on New Year's. Right. It should be really cool. That's cool. Yeah. But I know at least I was born on New Year's. My uh, my niece was born on New Year's. That's cool. Mm-hmm. New Year's or Rosh Hashanah? Uh, New Year's. Okay. That's cool. Like yeah. the first or the 31st? The first. Wow. That's cool. New Year's, baby. Angelina. Mm. Mm-hmm. Cool. She's 12 now. I was like, <laughs> she's definitely not 10. Yeah. <laughs> so all she has to know... It's pretty easy to remember her. To remember how how old it is from the year. Oh yeah. How old she is from the year. Yeah, for sure. There's no like, is her birthday here or not? Mm-hmm. It's always there. It's yeah, always exactly. It's always past. Exactly. <laughs> you just have to know the the, the day. It's a date, like the year date. It's kind of funny. That's why I think it's funny when people get married on like Valentine's Day or Thanksgiving. It's like, yeah. oh, easy to remember our anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lazy, lazy. <laughs> yeah. What is it like? You're, like, when is it too soon to remember an anniversary? If it's like, obviously, a year is important if you've been dating somebody for a year. But if you've been dating somebody for six months, that's not like an anniversary day, is it? Or is it? Depending on how the relationship is going. Yeah. It's like, oh, if it's super passionate and you're like, oh man, this has been great, baby. Yeah. We're at six months. How you feeling? Yeah. Or if it's like mediocre, it's like casual, and then it's like, casual or whatever. and it's like, oh, so we're at six months now. Uh, where are we at? Uh, yeah. You know, I usually break up with my boyfriends when we're at six months, but you're sticking around. You're cool, right? <laughs> six months. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's like, okay, we're at six months. See ya. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a good point. I mean, so it could go either way, but yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I'd say it's like... Ca- You're so ca- insensitive. Capturing a... Uh, I'm going to get a lot of angry emails from this. Yeah, capturing a... Um... <laughs> angry emails, joe at passionunchained.com. <laughs> I'm really excited to see if anyone no, takes right? that up. <laughs> <laughs> so insensitive. I am very sensitive, actually. Uh, but no, I mean, there's... I can tell by your voice. Yeah, there's like times where... I like to remember things. As mm. much weed as I smoke, I definitely make it a point to remember anniversaries. Nice. I've started to smoke weed. Really? Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> Maybe we'll, CBD weed. Obviously. Where are you yeah. at with it? Do you feel good? Uh, yeah, I feel great. Okay, cool. That's all that matters. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. It, um, it's great. I, I just have to check with myself. Like, if I'm in a place where I... I I never really been in this place, but like my plan is if I ever feel like I have the urge to smoke, because I don't really, it's not a coping mechanism for me. Like I don't, when I have an urge to, to like do anything, uh, like if anything, my coping mechanism is sex. Mm-hmm. That's the way I would hide from my feelings. Right. But the thing is, even that I've gotten control over. So even that, like when I feel like an urge to do something instantly, like eat, sex, anything to distract myself from my feelings, I instead sit with it. So I don't think that marijuana will, will like weed will come to that point. Um, but I've, I feel like it's, it's a great balancer. Mm-hmm. Because if anything, 
I have an issue with, which I haven't, I've been working on it, so I don't have an issue with it now. Um, but it would be, it would be being frustrated and irritable. Yeah. And angry. Exactly. Um, I don't even have to be high. As long as I smoke every now and then, I don't feel like I even have any frustration to control. Mm -hmm. But it's not like I'm passive. I'm still like present. I'm still um, able to have all my feelings, including anger. But it like doesn't go overboard, if anything. I like it that you changed your affirmations immediately as you were saying it. <laughs> like, well, which which part? Where you were talking about how you, oh, well, I have these feelings, but no, actually, I don't have them anymore. I've evaluated them. Yeah. <laughs> well, a part of it is is me describe is me, you know, when you say something and then you realize that you said something that wasn't entirely true. Yeah. So part of me was clarifying it. Exactly. Um, and then also, I think it's really important to, because you can't lie about the, the things that ha happen, but you can reframe it, and that's what you have control over. So exactly. some of it was reframing. And that's a powerful word right there as far as the everyday language mm -hmm. goes. You know, we, we say all these things, and it's good to, like, acknowledge what you say and yeah. possibly switch it around if you, if you need to because, you know, words are a powerful thing. They are. Yeah, and, and that's one thing that got me confused for a while is I was like, well, am I lying? Well, if, if I'm saying that things happened that didn't, then I'm lying. Right. But one meaning is just as accurate as the other meaning. Mm -hmm. If I'm saying, the, if I'm talking about the same things that are happening, like for instance, um, uh, recently, uh, a girl that I was dating, um, we had a, a small argument and um, it doesn't really seem like there's any tension anymore. It kind of just killed it. Um, and I could say, oh, I'm so disappointed. This was, could have been great. Or I could be like, great. Like now I know we're not compatible. It saves a lot of time. Right. If we can't, if we, if an if an argument like this um, causes everything to fizzle, then I'd rather that happen. No. You're at that six month mark. You're exactly. <laughs> yeah. So like that's that's all reframing because you're talking. You're not lying. The same thing happened. Like no matter what, either either explanation I give, I'm not lying about the thing that happened. I'm just looking at it from a different perspective. Right. And they're both just as e just as accurate. Mm -hmm. Like objectively, they're both just as accurate. I can choose. Mm -hmm. So why the fuck would I choose the first one? Exactly. You know? Yeah. For anything in life. If for anything in that in that matter. Yeah. You know, we have the power to choose. Yeah. I've got the power. Boo! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> You're fun. Um. It's been going almost. An I would love to talk to you more. Are your podcast about an hour hour long? I don't really, I don't know. I'm kind of in the, the point where I'm just throwing stuff at the wall. Like, I'd rather create and then organically follow into pattern. Cool. Then, like, yeah. choose, like, this is the thing. It's going to be this. I love that method. You know? I did some painting the other night for a little competition. And I, yeah. I didn't want to think too hard about it. I wanted to go yeah. in there with a raw. For sure. A raw feeling, you know? Yeah. And see what happened. I mean, I have goals for this. One thing I'm realizing as I get older, I'm sound like a fucking... In my 30, I'm 27, <laughs> but I feel like I'm at that point where I'm getting enough experience to like draw conclusions about the world and like have an opinion that like means something. No, absolutely. Um, even like if you have a lot of experience as a six year old, I'm sure you could. But like Oprah, as a 20 year old, she'd been through a ton of fucking shit. Right. Um, I don't know if you heard her story. Fucking crazy. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Know her story. So like she would be, I would imagine, wiser than like a six, than many 60 year olds at 20 mm -hmm. or like 25 when she she probably still was. Can't, you know, life was probably still chaotic at 20, but like 25, yeah. whatever. Um, but, um, so, yeah, so, uh, fuck. <laughs> what were you talking about? Uh, you were talking about uh, not having a direction and as far as going into this. Yeah. So I've learned that um, I can have a desired outcome. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, the way that it comes about, I'm not in control of. Right. So, like, I'd be like, I want this in my life. And I think this is a good path to it. But the thing is, life throws you curveballs, and sometimes the curveballs are actually shortcuts. Mm -hmm. And you've just got to leave, be able to be present and open to the possibilities and try, you know, and be efforting towards what you want. But um, don't be so cocky to think that you know the best way to get yourself to your goals. Exactly. Because you don't. You know, the world's going to throw you a better way, and if you're so focused on the way that you want to do it, well, you're going to miss it. That's a good point. Yeah. That's a good point. I mean... We're at this age where our brains are starting to develop a little bit more as, you know, we're starting mm. to think a little bit more clearly. Yeah. And not so much with our uh, junk. Ideally. And our stomach. Yeah. <laughs> you know what well, I mean? Well, the best way to a man's heart is through 
his penis or stomach. Yeah, I mean, there's they say there's two brains, but there's definitely three. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But no, nah, man, it's it's a beautiful time in our lives where we, you know, like I said, we start acknowledging our feelings. I still think of my dick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have to. Yeah. But you know, it's this is a good time in our lives to like you know start asking questions. You yeah. know? What is this for? Yeah. You know. Yeah. What's my legacy gonna be? What is this? That's gonna yeah. be important in a decade. Right. You know. Very important. For for like subjectively, yeah. Yeah. You heard of Piaget? Mm. -mm. Okay. Uh, child developmental psychologist, and he had eight kids, and he like did essentially case studies on his kids as he was being a good parent. I'm sure. I don't know enough about him to know his parenting. He did his own. He did his own case study on his own kids. Yeah. Yeah. And so the whole idea was, um, there's these Piaget's, I think eight stages where he noticed that. And he also, I think he did clinical work, or at least research, I don't know enough about what his work was, but, um, if I can play. Um, the first stage is like infancy, where the child goes into, if they come out of that stage good, it's they get a feeling of trust of the world. Mm -hmm. If they get out of that period in, and you didn't get what they need, then they have a sense of distrust. Mm -hmm. And the next is like, like pre-toddler, I think, is like autonomy versus codependence mm -hmm. and I might be fucking this all up I'm not getting them out of order or whatever but it's like but then, I see where you're going yeah then then the kid if they come out right you know because the two terrible twos are when they learn to say no because they're learning the boundaries between them and the people around them they're learning mm -hmm. that I'm not mommy I'm not my brother I'm not daddy I'm a different person they realize that realizing that they have boundaries and they're learning the uh, the very start of the theory of mind right where my mind is different than you, and I might think you're thinking some of this, but I don't really know what you're thinking. It's just my my interpretation of what you're giving off, and we're really separate people, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and so then, oh, I think it's initiative versus non-initiative. Actually, it's like the it's like when they're learning to take initiative, exactly, something like that. And then um, if uh, initiative versus dependence or something, and then if the say the parents were too controlling or something, or whatever, and they would come out of that stage feeling like they don't know how to take initiative, feeling like they have to ask permission for things, etc. Mm -hmm. um, and that was, and, and well, what I'm driving it to is when you're like in your 40s or something, it's, um, I think like legacy versus confusion or something like that. Okay. It's not that, I mean, but it's something similar where it's like, if they come out of it right, and they're thinking about a legacy. They're building a legacy. That's they figure out what they want for legacy. If they come out of it wrong, then they're, they're still just kind of that. drifting through life. Yeah. And not satisfied and and, and, and worried. About, you know, that's when midlife crisis comes. Which know? I definitely do see that pattern in people mm -hmm. and in myself. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, it's it's a cool thing to think about as far as like you're going through phases and at each end of a decade you're mm -hmm. going through another life transition. Mm -hmm. And so that's a. That's a good one to think about, honestly, because yeah. um, I definitely want to leave a legacy. I want to, I want to be sure to. Yeah, we get. Be sure to, to leave something for the future generations. What do you want your legacy to be? Oh man, passion, art. I want it to be. Passion, full art. Music. I want, mm. I want my recipes passion. to be around. I want, um, mm. you know, I want. To I'm going to create amazing performances that are watched over and over mm. again. You know? Your memories. Yeah. So like you want to create a memory of, um, uh, of somebody. You want to put the memory of a great Nutcracker in thousands of people that you perform to. Right. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say the Nutcracker, but yeah, I want to. That's wanna, an example. Yeah, I want to put a good performance on and like use that as examples that people can learn off of. You mm -hmm. know. Uh, so what do you want people to say about you at your eulogy? Um, I would want them to say that I was, you know, very determined and. Uh, very um, strong and mm. um, sensitive, and I want you know to be able to say like I did something good for the planet, mm -hmm. you know, instead of just being an asshole and suck, fuck, and consume, mm. you know. Because um, I'm a I'm a very giving person in, in heart, and so I definitely want to make it a point to like help out the people in need, mm -hmm. and even the people that don't even need anything. I want to mm. just help uh, help open up pathways in their brain you know because mm -hmm. uh, that's initially what we're going to be doing with our music is like we're sending a message of uh, happiness and mm -hmm. positivity and passion and, and productivity and manifestation mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. meditation your music yeah. yeah and so it's just going to be a chain reaction you know because I've, I've noticed there is there is a part of society that is pretty 
negative and mm -hmm. that wants to just sit in their filth and they think that the world's going to end in a few years and blah mm -hmm. blah blah but there's also a very big side of society that is becoming more aware of what we're putting in our body mm -hmm. and how we're treating our you know our mm -hmm. minds and our yeah. and our spirit and so i think this is this is a really powerful time mm -hmm. you know 2020 in my eyes is almost like uh, a, a new revolution is happening mm -hmm. just like in the 60s we mm -hmm. had all this things going on now we live in a sensitive time mm -hmm. where people don't even know um what to call your gender mm -hmm. you know what i mean and so in my eyes this is a perfect time to start implementing more sensitivity more mm -hmm. empathy more mm -hmm. uh enthusiasm you mm -hmm. know what i mean because of enthusiasm for other people for for life in general life yeah enthusiasm just be enthusiastic about like the beautiful greenery like mm. that cute little freaking yellow I flower know, right you know just be where's the yellow flower these cute little guys. You oh, know? I see it. Yeah, they're adorable. Just be like well. enthusiastic about that. It's like the yeah. littlest things can make a dramatic difference in your yeah. everyday existence. Yeah, there was an article I read actually that says something similar. Um, there's this uh, subreddit. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of semen retention? Mm -mm. It's exactly what it sounds like. And the whole idea, um, and this is in a couple of different uh, ideologies, the whole idea is that as a man, um, our semen has um, energy in it, like sexual energy and also a lot of nutrients. Like, uh, from an objective standpoint, has a lot of nutrients that we're giving up. Right. And then I know that for me, and from what I understand for most men, when I jack off or have sex... Um, You're releasing it. I'm releasing it, and I feel depleted. Oh, like, yeah. I feel like insta instantly I feel depleted. I mean, I usually go to sleep after I jack off. We were off. talking about that last night. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, and it's... This idea of semen retention is that you can have sex but you have to keep you can, there's a way to like You're holding your chi in exactly holding your chi in yeah. and so it circulates into your life and um i was looking at this um this post on subreddit on that subreddit he didn't just do semen retention he's he also did um what he called a dopamine fast mm -hmm. which is like anything that gives a rush of pleasure like no sugar no music no movies and he did that for like a month and or not a month he said i think he did it for like a day He's been doing, like, semen retention for, like, two months, this guy in the post. That's wild. Yeah, and then um, he did a dopamine fast for, I think he said, like, 53 hours or something. It was, like, a little over two days. No laughing, no... No laughing. <laughs> no laughing. But just, just kind of, like, live a pure life, like, as if you were some Puritan or whatever, just for a little bit. Yeah. And he said that um, he was looking at the sunset, and it was, like, as beautiful as if he was on acid. It was, like, so gorgeous and so colorful. And um, these, like, kids, these little kids just came up and sat with him because he, like, was giving off this aura that was, like, super like a super safe to be around him. And it was just this m amazing, magical thing. And, and I actually, after that, I've been putting on music a lot less and allowing myself to sit with myself more. Mm -hmm. um, That's I awesome. I cut out porn completely. Dude, yeah. Um, in, in, I, I did this thing because I didn't know if I would have the willpower. Um if I watch porn at all during February, I'm giving my Apple Watch to my friend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he knows. And he, he has enough character that I know he's not going to make me mess up. <laughs> Sorry, I'm smelling gas. Smelling something? Oh. I've got a very sensitive nose. That's good. I just noticed that... Oh, I smell too. You have a lot of gas. A little bit. Yeah. That's sometimes the excess from um, the pipes. Maybe. Yeah. I but it's that. awesome you're cutting off porn because I did that a few years ago and I noticed a dramatic difference in my yeah. existence. I bet. You know what I mean? I bet. You know, you can still masturbate, you but I, yeah. I just felt... I do that too right I now. I just don't feel... feel dirty. I don't feel... Uh, you know, it was even getting in the way of my actual sex. Yeah. You know what I oh, mean? Oh, yeah. Like, you want you want and more. Like, it's not enough. It's never enough. Like yeah, you're always in your head thinking about things that's not there. It's, it becomes a very sick, demented realm. Yeah. You know what I mean? And... Um, yeah. That's also a sensitive subject because there's a lot of people that's in the sex industry that uh, don't think it's bad. Yeah. And initially, yes, it's paying your bills. Yes, you might get off on it and might you might enjoy it. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, later on down the road, you're going to be depleted. Mm -hmm. You're 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 going to be beat up. You're going to mm -hmm. be you're going to have traumatic experiences. You're going to mm -hmm. have trauma. You're going to have things you need to heal from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you know it's because you you put yourself through something your body didn't want to get a paycheck. Yeah, I mean you know, like it's the same thing with uh, with, uh, with, uh, with with uh, with dirty dancing. You know what I mean? What's what uh, do you mean dirty shipping. dancing? 
Okay. You know, I, I'm a, as a dancer, I appreciate pole dancers. Mm-hmm. I appreciate it's a lot of strength. The strength. I appreciate the art form. Yeah. But, you know, I think that stripping can be very damaging mm-hmm. um, on both parties, mm-hmm. on the male and female end. If you're trying to date somebody that's mm-hmm. doing this, you know, it's you know I've. I'm, don't get me wrong. Fidelity. Don't get me wrong. There's yeah. definitely good stories out there. There's definitely good sure. relationships. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But still, there's like this this point of jealousy. This point mm-hmm. of like you can't get in a real relationship because mm-hmm. you're doing this. Um, and also, it's like you know, it's just a it's a dirty world. Like the um, people people excuse it mm-hmm. because they say sex work has been around for thousands of years. It's true. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, but at the same time, now we've we've done it with a simple click of a button on a you know we can now order escorts and we can mm-hmm. do this and it's okay. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Well, you can't order escorts legally in the U.S. Right, but you know what I'm saying. People still do it. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure. Well, I mean, is it ever gonna go away? No, it's not gonna go it? away. But it, yeah, I think it should for a certain extent. Mm-hmm. It should. It should be limited. Saying. It should be limited. It should be, um, you know, it should be uh, filtered. Filtered. You know what I mean? Okay, so what's your stance on sex in general? Like, is this is this your stance on sex in general or just on, like, sex that isn't f- fulfilling? Like, that is more, sex like, work? about the carnal You know, I, I suppose I feel about it. It's, it's a sacred thing that I'm getting more in touch with. Sex. And sex. In general. It's a sacred okay. thing. It's it's like something that, you know, I've been I've uh, I've used it and abused it and mm-hmm. then I realize that it's like it's not um, there's no intention in it. Mm-hmm. There's no like zhuzh. Zhuzh. Then it's not satisfying, it's not gratifying. The French word for zhuzh. Happiness. Like yeah. it's it's like purity, it's mm. heartwarming, it's healing, it's yeah. happy. You know what but I mean? It's interesting to say that because sometimes like like uh when, when I'll have a, a one night stand say I meet a girl at a bar I yeah. don't usually go to bars to meet girls but let's just say I do a lot of a lot of it is like oh you should be happy you should be proud it should be a good thing and it is it's like uh, it's enjoyable in the moment but then when nothing else happens um, it just kind of feels I just wasted my seed yeah like, exactly <laughs> like it feels like I just ate a, I ate a big chocolate bar and now I'm coming down <laughs> and it's like fuck it was that's good funny, while I was eating it. That's a funny way to put it. Well, it's true. It was good while I was eating it, but now I feel kind of empty and I feel like depleted of nutrients. Yeah. But like emotionally. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't mean that you like you have to gush over, over every girl and be like, you know, super lovey dovey. I mean, but you know, you can have it. It needs to be something more than just uh, the physical sensation. Yeah. Yeah. This is. I mean, this is a sensitive subject for, for multiple. Yeah. People. You know, for everybody, everybody's situation is, it can be a sensitive one because it's, it's like sometimes people can't even get a simple relationship. Mm. You know what I mean? It's there's a lot of people out there that you know have been dying for love, dying for sex, and well, that's probably the reason why they can't have it. It's yeah. because they're they have too much need. They're yeah, too, they're too, too much needy. need for it, and so they haven't figured out how to be yeah. comfortable in themselves. Right. And you still know, have desires. Masturbation is very important. I like it. <laughs> you know? I like it. It's, fun. it's very important. But at the same time, it can be it can be damaging. You know what I mean? It can be a coping mechanism. It can yeah. be like, oh, I feel lonely, but I'm too scared to meet anyone yeah. and put myself out there. So, <laughs> especially when I there's mean, porn involved, it's a lot more powerful. And even for vibrators. I've had issues with my groups. Mm. <laughs> I don't want to get into that subject. We'll save that for you another sure? podcast. You, sure? <laughs> yeah. you can get into it right now. Yeah, you know, it's not. It's <laughs> not necessary. I, I interviewed a guy. Um, I actually took the interview down a while ago because um, I was going through a period where I was getting a lot more comfortable with my sexuality, and so in my mind, um, I didn't want to have this on the podcast because it disagreed with my own views. But I interviewed the guy who founded Noah Church. He founded. Um, um, Addicted to porn dot com, mm-hmm. so like a, a blog and and the like program that helps people get off of porn addiction. Fascinating character. He's like a volunteer firefighter in like Portland or something. Really cool dude. Nice. Um, but I, I felt like I disagreed with that, and to an extent I do. To a large extent I don't now, and I realize that porn porn kind of like changes the way that I look at girls, and it changes the way I look at sex, and it takes a lot away from me. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, I think there is merit to be like, well, you're making sex more 
more accessible and more like available and sexual expression more free mm -hmm. um I like that idea. I like the idea that we're legitimizing um, our carnal urges because if we if we let our carnal urges go and we just decide that we're going to be a neutral people, um, that I think there's a harm to that. Well, it could go many different directions. You know, um, I think there's a possibility that we could redirect pornography because there's the yeah, sure it could still be around, but it could get mm -hmm. a little less raunchy. It could mm -hmm. you know. Crossplay is fun. It's like there is ways of of getting off on things because you mm. know sometimes it can help out a, a couple that's having pro trouble in the, mm. in the bedroom. Like put on some get sex, ideas. yeah, get a sexy thing. But you know the whole, uh, you know, <laughs> I was gonna say some really fun. No, say it. Say <laughs> it. Two rolls, one cup stuff. Like mm. ain't a yeah. prolapse thing. That shit's not necessary. No, <laughs> it's almost like it's almost like you you get a, a tolerance. It's like yeah. you smoke weed for a while, and now you have to, like, smoke a pound every day. Or, like, or dab. You take a big-ass dab. Yeah. <laughs> or you're not high at all. Yeah. It's like, that's like that, but, like, for your penis. Exactly. Or vagina. It's like, I can't feel anything! Give me more! Give me more! Well, that's the whole thing about the vibrator. Okay, yeah. now I'm going to talk about it. Because, I'm excited. Because uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I'm going to go ahead and say it's like Do my, my ex-girlfriend had this little thing yeah. that looked like a lipstick thing. I forgot what exactly what it was Oh, called. I heard of those. Yeah, yeah. But it had Vesper, very, very like strong settings. Yeah. And she kept on using it yeah. during our intercourse. Yeah. And I mentioned it. I was like, I don't really, I don't really want to use this thing because it's like kind of like... It's pow too powerful for you. It's, it's no, I, I couldn't feel it, but it was yeah. like taking away between our connection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, so I can't get you off. What am yeah. I doing? What am I doing? That's like part of an insecurity, Aww. but at the same time, <laughs> I started to do some more research yeah. on it and realized that it was numbing. It was it, a, does, it yeah. was numbing her clitoris. It was like yeah. it was the only kind of intense orgasm that she yeah. could get was from this vibrator. Yeah, and I asked her not to use it. You know, when we were doing it, she stopped, uh -huh. and then it came back. Cause she and felt she needed it. She needed it to get off. She yeah, because you probably have to go through a withdrawal period. Yeah, where, like you, she probably have to resensitize herself. By it's not the same thing as the pornography, yeah. but at the same time, it's a little oh, bit yeah. more intense. You know, so I was like, yeah. okay, like, yeah, like this isn't fun oh. anymore. Like I'm like trying to have sex with you, not with your vibrator. Oh man, like, yeah. Am I even here? Do you need me? <laughs> no, you're just the background dude. Yeah, <laughs> you're, you're just the image that she needs. That's so that's up. one thing is like it's, it, yeah. it's a it's um, it's a, so it's been prescribed by sex educators. Yeah. So there is a difference between acknowledging that and and, and using it. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, because I want I want to have sex with Emily on here. Exactly. Emily, I forgot her last name. She's really cool. I love her podcast. Like and I, she's, uh, she's probably gonna listen to this and be like, "What the fuck." But that's okay. I mean, it's one point of view, which I think is very valid, and I'm sure she, as a sex educator, there's thinks it's valid as too. Yeah, there's also. multiple opinions on it. Yeah. And so, like, I agree with it, too, for a healing aspect, as far as learning how to yeah. orgasm, because there's a lot of women out there who can't yeah. fully come. And you know, so mental things or, yeah, or, and so, or physical things or whatever. You know... I'm into having like a vibrating butt plug once in a while, and you know, oh uh, not on me, but you know, <laughs> but like I don't have any. I'm sorry. Throw it into this mix. Like yeah. I'm into using toys. Yeah. But for the everyday sexual sexual use, like mm -hmm. I would like to, you know, be the person getting the person. Yeah, off, yeah. You know what I, mean? I, I think that's healthy. Is like, I think the key would be like moderation. Mm -hmm. And I'm not a sex educator or researcher by any means. Um, Except for the whole experiments I run, <laughs> but uh, I, I think it's it's really important to be able to just go back to basics and have vanilla sex and enjoy that. Yeah. And um, maybe it's controversial, but I think that if you need something that's not like absolutely, I mean, I forget about need to spice it up. Like everyone needs to spice it up and try new things, and that's fun. But if you absolutely need something else, then that's probably something you should work on in therapy. I mean, this is very true. But another thing is like anything we say right now is going to be controversial because of the time we live in right Joe now. Joe at passionunchained.com. You know? <laughs> Send all angry emails right there. Everything, and I will make sure to make fun of you anything, on the next podcast. And everything we say <laughs> has something for somebody to argue about or be sensitive yeah. to. So, you know, I'm, you know, I definitely am, you know, I'm all about that. Yeah. And I, I respect people's opinions and I definitely don't 
uh, want to piss off anybody. But yeah. At the same time, I'm not going to hold myself back yeah. between expressing myself and talking and acknowledging. You know, it's I think like, that's important. It's a learning process for everyone. I think what's happening now is that there's an opportunity for people whose opinions were normally not heard to be heard. Mm-hmm. And so, like, if you haven't been able to say your experience for a while, especially women who's, who've been abused or harassed, like, for a while, like, none of the things you said had any merit because nobody would listen to it. And so now that we're allowing that into the national conversation, then, like, that, that anger that was never expressed is being expressed. Mm-hmm. And I think it's just... It's almost like if you hold a pot, boiling pot down or pressure or whatever, you take it off, it's going to be a little bit chaotic for a while, and then it's going to balance out and everything's going to make sense. So I think we're coming to the end, near the end of the period where it's like, it's gotten more and more, it's gotten overly rapid, mm-hmm. and I think it's going to it's gonna more integrate into society. Exactly. Because like, like Aziz Ansari, the thing, like he had a bad date, and he like just read, it just seemed from, from all accounts that he just read her wrong. Yeah. He just made her a little uncomfortable by going a bit too fast, um, and and she came out. She's like, oh, you know, it was like a big thing. It was like, oh, he raped. He didn't rape her. It was just an, a misunderstood date. You know, it was just something, this normal thing that could happen. I mean, sure, there are women who are raped, but that's the part of like the scenario where it almost went. It was almost like everyone was so new to be able to have their voices heard that they didn't really know how to how to like. It wasn't integrated. Yeah. There was a lot of pain and anger coming out at the same time. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, there's, we're still walking on eggshells. You know, it's like, um, so I'm, I'm, a we is like everyone. You mm. know, everyone has. Uh, I appreciate the Me Too movement because it's opened up, even the male side, to acknowledge that they have been, um, mm. have had trauma experiences. Mm. You know, so this is a sensitive time. I don't know the story that you just mentioned. Oh, Aziz. Um, but um, some some girl. Uh, you know who Aziz Ansari is, right? Mm-hmm. He's a comedian. Okay. Um, he's the guy that was in Parks and Rec, the Indian dude. Okay, yeah. And he's also ma- he yeah, I love him. Master and none, yeah. <laughs> um, the girl came out and said that he raped her, and then the story essentially was they'd gone on a date. Uh, she came back to his house, um, and he was like sexually forward. And she went with it and then later said that she didn't like it. And it was essentially a story of he, he read the signals wrong and it seemed like she was into it. And it was like, okay, well, you know, that's a misunderstood date. It's not great. It's not a super great experience. It's probably something you want to avoid, but it's not like a rape. And everything boiled down and he's doing things again now, which I'm thankful for. Um, and so I think that now that women are being heard, it's almost like, the pendulum has swung almost to like over believing them and not to like and not to like have it be a balanced conversation. We're like, okay, what happened? Let's get to the bottom of things. Mm-hmm. And so my my what it looks like and my hope is that it gets to a conversation where um, where where you just the conversation is okay, well what happened? Okay, that was horrible, that was not horrible. Like have a reasonable expe- reasonable discussion of what it was that happened. And what should be done about it? Mm-hmm. If you know the guy needs to go to jail, if the girl needs to go to jail, probably the guy. Though the guy needs to go to jail, whatever, then put him in jail. But if he doesn't, let's let it go. And I think that that's the part that needs to happen. Is there isn't really a letting go at all because people are all frustrated because they haven't been able to express any of this in the yeah. past. Right, I can see that. You know, I think there is a there's a time and place for all things. There's a there's a spot for for the, the assholes, the chauvinistic assholes that mm-hmm. do need to be disciplined. Mm-hmm. And um, I think there shouldn't just be a slap on the wrist, you know, there should be definitely be some kind of like, you know, as adults, we, we don't get disciplined like we, we, we did, we would in, when we were younger. So, you know, sometimes there is, there is situations where, you know, the, 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 the lie detector or whatever should be mm-hmm. put into the spectrum, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Because there is a bunch of assholes out there, mm-hmm. you know, and there's also a bunch of women out there who are also very damaging. Mm-hmm. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, there's there's, there's so, shitty people in this world. So there's a bunch of shitty people out there that you know are being uh, taken um, to discipline and taken to jail, and at the same time, mm-hmm. there does need to be some healing on both ends mm-hmm. as far as clear communication mm-hmm. and what happens in those in those situations. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know what I mean? Alcohol and drug yeah. induced situations like that are not fun and we should limit the, how much alcohol we consume on the daily you know yeah. what I mean oh alcohol is um, 
No good for you. No, it's no good for you, but... Which reminds me, do you want a hard kombucha? I would love a hard kombucha. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a moment. We're all talking shit about be- <laughs> alcohol, but really it's... It's so delicious. I know, right? <laughs> so I figured we'd lighten it up a little bit. It's great stuff to talk about. I think it needs to be talked about. Um... But hey, I also think we need to Thank you. Yeah, um, shout wow. out. I'm not getting paid for this at all, but shout out to uh, ooh, Flying Embers Kombucha. It's, oh, let me do that again. Ta da! It's grapefruit time. If you want to sponsor me, Joe, at 4.5% volume alcohol. Grapefruiting time with ginger, turmeric, and ashwagandha. For a limited time only, side effects may cause. <laughs> nice. I, I didn't really know how much to congratulate you. That was fucking hilarious. I didn't want to go overboard for enthusiasm. Um, yeah, um, the Chaim. So, uh, Flying Embers, uh, Joe at ProjectOnChain.com. Mm. Feel free to. Uh, I will not do this anymore unless we have some kind of deal. See, I love alcohol great. way too much to give it up. But at the same time, we need to limit our consumption of alcohol yes. because it can really fuck up the uh, the sex world. Yes. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. It I gets, got it makes way things too really drunk the weird. other day, and I couldn't get a boner. What's wrong with me? That's <laughs> fucked up. That's <laughs> fucked up, man. Come on, whiskey no, I'm, industry. No, I'm I think sure. the whiskey industry and the uh, Viagra industry are connected. Yeah, there's plenty of people that have the same issue, but, you know. Yeah, but, I mean, I, I mean... So, I've never really understood... I'm not really much of a drinker. I don't drink often. Mm-hmm. This is probiotics and shit, and I fucking love the taste. Oh, dude, it's a really um, good grapefruit flavor. Oh, yeah. I, I was making a joke because I, I saw him, the guy, he was um, giving samples out of H-E-B. Mm-hmm. And there are a few. There's one called Ancient Berry. <laughs> and then there's one called Grapefruit Time. Yeah. And I tried both of those, and there was a few more I didn't try. Um, but it's almost like, it's Grapefruit Time. Yeah. <laughs> what time is it? It's Grapefruit Time. Um, in the <laughs> dinner that I made for you guys, mm. there was, uh, I had mentioned uh, the Bolognese wine time sauce. Wine time. Wine time. Yeah, you it's know, wine time. It's wine time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I heard you said something about time. That's a new thing. I think that's, I probably, it's probably come back into fashion. It probably wasn't fashion a long time ago. Just like how the 1800s style logos were like back in fashion. Mm-hmm. Um, the logos that you see are now kind of like similar to the 1800s style. But um, having herbs in drinks, that used to be a thing. Too. And then it wasn't, and now it's a thing again. It's a thing. Yeah. It's totally a thing. Like the cold pressed juice guy had like, Herbs like basil was in one of the things. Exactly. Yeah, the photographer guy that was Johnny. Johnny, Johnny Lang. I wanted to get him on my podcast, but he left so early I couldn't. Uh, ask him. He's my roommate. Oh fuck it. Yeah. yeah. Ask him. Yeah. He would love to. Yeah. Awesome. Great. Yeah. I'll send you a link of the podcast that came out today, which is really fucking awesome. Uh, Matt Matt Sporer, um, and so you can show that to him and be like, "This is what this guy does." Dude, Johnny does some crazy shit, man. Nice. He, he's a badass photographer, but he also slack lines. What's a slack line? Uh, so it's the tightrope that you walk across oh, valleys shit. and all Fuck. kinds of all kinds of crazy. I stuff. want him on, dude. He's he's. he's I want him on yesterday. He's an adventure man. Nice. That's perfect. Yeah. Mm. Ah. Um. Well, we could talk about so much more, but this is, you know we I can have you on in a couple months. Yeah, man. So Absolutely. I think that's good for now. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, my pleasure. Lachaim. Lachaim. Cool, yeah, if you guys want to follow me, uh, my name is Michael Simon. I have a chef page. Uh, it's www.simonseats.com. And uh, the Instagram is Simon's Eats. Um, I'm also in a band called Soul, uh, Seeds of Soul. And you can find that on the Instagram, Seeds of Soul Music. Um, we got some shows coming up. If you're interested in any kind of meals or recipes, Shoot me an email, and I'm happy to help you out with any kind of culinary needs you have, you know? That's about it. Awesome.